Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And it's Jeremy from Tested. So one of the questions we used to get asked a lot, Jeremy, was what was this specific object in the background of our set? This guy right here. What is that? Well, it's something you created. No. It's called the Game Frame. And a lot of our new reviewers might not know what the Game Frame is. Can you explain what it is? Uh, well, sure, it's an LED pixel display. So I, I made it two years ago now. I put it up on, actually I showed it to you guys. And um, I said, I made this to show off old school video game art and the audience said, you need to crowdfund this. So I said, okay, I'll give it a shot and uh, put it up on Kickstarter, ended up making 700 of these things wow. in uh, 2014. And I learned quite a lot about um, building game frames, probably more than anybody else, I would imagine. And so I took everything that I learned and over 2015, I redesigned it from the ground up completely from scratch. Ah, so today we're actually going to be showing off the newest version of the game frame, your game frame version yeah. 2.0. I love that you described it as the world's lowest resolution display. 16 pixels by 16 pixels, basically a matrix of LEDs, uh, RGB LEDs of all colors, displaying 8-bit yep. classic inspired video game art. Uh, and you use it as a way to learn programming Arduino. Well, absolutely. Like I had done this other Arduino project, but this was when I went deep and I just did everything. With this one, I designed the circuit boards myself. Um, I did all, um, all the code, which of course leveraged a lot of really great open source libraries um, and learned quite a bit. But then I also learned you know, sort of my limitations. And so I worked with an electronics engineer to actually do really great circuit boards for this one. It's all one circuit board now. Um, and the code is much deeper now. In the old days, you had to choose between game or clock firmware, and they're both in, embedded in the new one. The new one is controlled by a IR remote, so we got rid of the buttons on top. It's perfectly square, like a pixel, so it should have always been that way, but it, I couldn't do it with the last design. Yeah, there's a lot of new manufacturing in this. You're, instead of laser cutting individual frame pieces, yeah. you have a nice two different finishes for this frame. It's a little larger. Uh, I remember one of the big things that you had a problem developing was the grid to isolate the pixels. Oh my gosh, like, yeah, it was machined originally with a CNC mill and it would just, there'd be all these burrs everywhere, it required a ton of work. Um, so the major in investment this time around was in making an injection mold mm. to do that properly. So now it uses this piece right here, uh, which is just like a beautiful one piece of plastic. It secures the circuit board on there, centers every pixel, no burrs, and it isolates every pixel. So you can have black pixels next to lit pixels and they're also square now, whereas before, because of the machining process, mm -hmm. the corners were slightly, you know. A little bit curved. rounded yeah. right there. Can we look, take a look at that matrix, that LED grid right here? So yeah. that, those are the lights, Uh huh. right? These are really super bright LED pixels. It's, it was tough to light this video, for instance, because these LEDs are so crazy bright that they just blow out most camera ranges. Uh, these are, this is on a very low brightness setting right now. Just as an example, I can boost it way up. Yeah. And it just, it just, it's, and the first comment people usually have when they see this is it's much brighter than I ever expected it would be. Right. And then behind that is a new controller. So yeah. you're actually using, uh, not an Arduino, you're using a, a Teensy board. Yeah, well, a Teensy is like an Arduino compatible microcontroller. Uh, this one is the Teensy LC, which is the lower cost one. I didn't need all the power of the, of the original Teensy 3.2 now. Um, and it's a great chip, um, but just like the old Arduino board that was on the original. I've just jam-packed this one, like fitting both the game and the clock on there was, uh, you know, almost every byte is taken. But it's, it's much faster, it now runs at 60 frames a second, um, and it supports the IR remote, and it's, it's just a, it's really awesome. I'm really, really proud of this new one. I took, you know, everything that I learned that I wanted to fix, I had a chance to do. Uh, it's slightly bigger, every pixel is, you know, one millimeter bigger, so you got 1.6 centimeters in both directions. You got um, a nice frame that's solid wood now and finished. Uh, and the back is even, you know, you don't get the, you can't see it in this shot, but it's, uh, it's just overall a nicer product. Now, I wanna talk about the art and the content you can put on this. Of course, like what would it be without that? You had a partnership with eBoy, yeah. people who do amazing pixel art to do, I think 70 pieces of original art mm -hmm. that you released with, with the original game frame. But since then, people have making their own art, people from the community out there. And you've also, you work on some software to let people convert videos to play on the game frame. Well, it's an Imagematic script, yeah. I mean, it's, you basically go to my website, ledsec.com, and you can download this thing if you have 
a game frame, and it's drag and drop. So you drag a movie onto this thing, and you can put entire movies onto the game frame, which is a ton of fun to watch. I mean, if you, if you know Tron or The Incredibles as well as I do, you can actually watch the movies on the game frame and, and basically hear them play out, and it, that's a ton of fun. So what else, because you use this as a learning experience. And yeah. I imagine it wasn't just manufacturing that you wanted to get refinement on, mm -hmm. it wasn't just working with the Teensy, but you wanted also maybe do something new. Uh, well, the, the extensibility of having a microcontroller that is removable, mm -hmm. um, I didn't, when I designed it like that, I thought, well, maybe one day I'll want to improve on that, but I didn't realize how quickly microcontrollers that had Wi-Fi would be released. And so when the particle photon came out, I started looking at porting the game frame to that. Initially, it was kind of difficult because it was an early stage company. The libraries weren't ported. But as time went by, it became a reality and I could do this thing. And so that's the major new advancement that no one knows yet that I'd like to sort of reveal today, I suppose, is that the game frame now runs particle, which gives it Wi-Fi capability. Now, what can you do with Wi-Fi on oh my gosh. this display? So, um, Currently with the game frame, in order to install new artwork, you have to um, go to the website, download the artwork, take the SD card out of the game frame, mm -hmm. copy it over, put it back on. And there's a whole forum of people sharing their work, and so you want to see what this stuff is. Now you can just go to a web interface and log into your game frame. It has like a built-in web server, and click the upload button, and you can upload the artwork straight from a computer. So you um, type in the IP, use a web browser, and right. you can drag and drop art. So this right. one this one is actually running the Wi-Fi chip on it right now. Uh, replacing it is just a matter literally of like pulling this out and putting this in. Um, and then you can just go, to, it, when you turn it on, it scrolls across an IP address, and that's the IP address that you want to go to with your web browser. You type that in, and you get this beautiful, responsive UI that works on cell phones, it works on laptops. And you can browse all the artwork. You can you know, play specific animations that you want to see. You can adjust all the settings. And you can add and delete folders and you know, new animations. And you can do that on your phone, even. Yeah, absolutely. But then like, the real fun for me comes with if this, then that compatibility. Yeah. So the if this then that, if you don't know, is, is kind of like this glue that ties all of the internet services together. So if you have an, a, an alert from somewhere, an event on the internet, even if it's the time of day or a calendar event or the weather, you can then ca cause that to trigger different actions. And so this it becomes a display for any internet event. With any custom image, animation. Exactly. So for instance, like if you get a new email, if you get a new Twitter follower, if you get a new Twitter mention, if the International Space Station flies over your address, you can it'll, have it play. It'll it. play a specific animation. And in fact, there are four new eBoy animations that do exactly those things. And they only play when those events happen. Uh, really you, cool. you can have it set you know, time of day to control the brightness, to turn it off, to turn it on. Uh, there's just a myriad of things. You, ha you can have a text message service that's totally free. It's with if, if this and that. So now my game frame is an actual contact in my phone so that I just pull up the text messaging and I send it. I say, play dance and it will play the dance animation, or I can control the brightness or turn it on, turn it off, um, and you can even display colors. So now it sort of becomes like a mood light, right? Mm -hmm. So you can just send it a color code, like a, like a web code, and uh, it'll show that color. And it's, it's just opened it up to become so much more than, than it was before, which was already, in my mind, like pretty cool. Yeah, the idea that you can get recipes with if this and that, and, yeah. and you know, inputs, all sorts of inputs, even voice inputs on devices like Alexa. That's right. Yeah, so you can, like for instance, we have one set up here. Alexa, trigger power. Sending that to it. There we go. And it just powered, it powered it off and then back on. Okay, so if this and that is, as people know who use it, the service can be, you know, it takes more time sometimes than you expect. The text messaging seems to be really, really quick. Um, getting emails, there's some, sometimes like a five minute delay, wow. but it does work and it's, it's a ton of fun to like just when you get a new Twitter follower, have a little bird pop on your screen. And if you wanted to, you could have it set up so that it's only for alerts like that. Like you could have it display black until you get an alert. So I don't know, like, I'm thinking that maybe companies would want to use that for some purpose or something like that, but it's just cool to have it alive and on the internet. Yeah, what I love that it wasn't just a project that you took on to make something that didn't exist, that you yeah. wanted to exist, but use it as a great learning opportunity, and then as a way to learn and experiment with new types of controllers and new boards and new services. Uh, the game frame has been my teacher in so many ways. I mean, I, 
I don't have any kind of programming uh, degree or electrical engineering degree. I just learned by doing this. And as you know, I, I am, am more or less the creator of the game frame, but in so many ways it has informed me the past three years. Uh, it's been like going to school and, I, and I, I, it means a lot to me. I'm very proud of it. Well, you can find out more about the game frame. We're of course gonna have it as we build out our new office, our new set. Um, but you can get your own. Jeremy, you're going to be selling these. Yeah. The information is below in the description. Uh, but your website is ledsec.com, L-E-D-S-E-Q.com. Thanks for bringing the new game frame to our office. And uh, Jeremy's a regular on our forum. So if you have a question for Jeremy, you can reach him on Twitter or post in the comments below. And uh, we'll be able to sort it out. But thanks for bringing the new game frame. Congratulations. Thank you, Norm. Thank you on the birth of the new game frame. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Hope to see these in many more places to come, and we'll see you guys in future videos on Tested. Until then, bye.